Nigeria recently downgraded its GDP from 6.5% to 6.3%. This was as a result of the impact of the recent floods on the country's agricultural output. Joining us now to discuss efforts to mitigate the negative impact on food security in Nigeria is Hadiza Ibrahim Malifia. She's the Nigerian Environment Minister. Minister, thank you so much for joining us. Can you take us through some of the environmental factors that may have been responsible for the floods, uh, particularly against reports that the um, reveal that excessive dredging of the Niger River was perhaps a factor to the to the flooding um, in Nigeria that we saw recently. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Uh, well, actually, the dredging of the river cannot be a reason for flooding. There are many factors that we can attribute. Basically, climate change issues. There have also been the factors that have to do with the intensity of the rainfall, the timing, and of course, the large volume, which we experienced more than ever before. In the last three decades, Nigeria has not gone through this. And uh, basically, when you dredge rivers, rivers are supposed to be dredged to encourage or increase the capacity of holding water. So the dredging cannot be a reason for the flooding. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, millions of Nigerians have been displaced by the continued floods, floods that uh, are ravaging communities. What measures are, are being taken to avoid a recurrence of these floods, particularly as some of these factors are, in fact, out of your control? Uh, uh, quite a number of measures. Before the floodings, we did have a flood early warning system in place and we alerted more than 500 communities. We also were able to reach out to states and local government areas. And we have 12 automated web-based systems in place. We tried hard to reach to the very remote areas and some of the state governors were forthcoming. But more often than not, you find it's not easy for people to leave their abode to a new place. Now, in place, so far have been IDPs, internally displaced persons camps across the states. We've been able to cater for all those who have lost their homes through the management agency, the federal government agency in charge of risks and such disasters. We have also been able to provide facilities that will allow them to continue with their education, for example, in Delta State. I must say, however, that the enormity of this is much more than we anticipated. And uh, we're not finding it easy. It's a bit tough, but we're trying hard. And we're glad that in some of the areas, the waters are receding. But uh, you can see in the southern parts of the states, as the waters recede in the northernmost areas, they go down the south, and it's becoming increasingly challenging for us. Mm -hmm. Now, Minister, earlier you spoke about some of the environmental factors that played a role um, when one looks at the impact of this flood. Let's uh, get some insight into the Nigerian government's programs for the environment and the type of international partnerships that you've been concluding in order to ensure that, from an environmental point of view, that you're on top of the situation. Uh, we had earlier much, much... Much earlier, we've been in uh, partnership with uh, international organizations. The UNDP has always been with us. The UNICEF uh, agencies, World Bank agencies, they've always been in touch with us. But as you know, these are uh, global challenging times. And uh, you can see that this is not just peculiar to Nigeria. It's happening all over the world, but our peculiarity lies principally in the nature of our society, where you have uh, a lot of superstitious beliefs. You have people who just cannot see a reason why they've been there for 30 years, and suddenly you come one morning and tell them to move because there are going to be rains falling. And uh, of course, more challenging is also the fact that uh, we, we need further education, I must admit. We need further education and advocacy. But everything that we can was put in place before the flood. Mm -hmm. Minister, I want to just get your thoughts on the impact of the floods, particularly on food inflation and how this will affect the economy and, and food production, particularly if one considers that you've had to adjust your GDP figures because of the impact of, of the floods on, on agriculture. Yes, that's a major challenge. On agriculture, we, 
in the northern parts, for example, we lost a very uh, ample, uh, num a very substantial number of our farmlands were washed away. And this, of course, will be a challenge. The federal government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, has worked out modalities to provide those people in areas where the waters are receding with very early harvesting crops, uh, seedlings that they would be uh, seeds that they would uh, be able to harvest in the next 60 days or thereabouts. And also we do have a, a quite a substantial reserve that we would be able to reach out to the people. In the meantime, the issue of food uh, is not uh, an, an issue in any of the camps. We have much more than uh, we would want to cry that we need food to take into the camps. Rather, our challenge lies in the area of infrastructure development or rehabilitation of the infrastructure and also it lies in the area of what do we do next to avoid further occurrence. Mm -hmm. Of course there is the, um, the hope that um, rice production um, would also increase in terms of its output of cash crops like cocoa by about 20 percent. However the recent floods you know have washed away the country's hopes. How much investment has Nigeria lost to the flood and how will these floods impact on output in general minister as a final question? Uh, uh, millions of Naira in terms of investment, I wouldn't want to give a figure that would be the uh, Federal Ministry of Agriculture, but I do know that in areas like uh, a state in the middle part of the country, Kogi State, we had one or two farmers committing suicide because of the level of investment they felt they had lost. We have lost substantial uh, farmlands, rice farms and so on. But I assure you that uh, we are a very resilient country. It's been very challenging, it's been very traumatizing, but the government has worked very hard and is working hard to provide alternatives to the farmers so that we can carry on. Uh, we anticipate a, a very negative impact on food security, but we do not as anticipate a crisis situation. I'm sure, God willing, it's something that we can handle.